Greetings, goons, gangsters, and gamers. It's your boy, The Good Tonight. Today we're doing another sort of deviation of a deviation of all these videos we do. Generally, I'm doing a lot of gear reviews, and to a lesser extent, uh, gut firearm peripheral reviews. But today we're going to be talking about hand wraps. And um, hand wraps tie more into the martial art aspect of things. The reason I don't do a lot of shooting videos or uh, gear videos is because the current location I live has a lot of, uh, let's say, um, overlap with uh, this label here, so put that tag back up there where it belongs and we're gonna be talking about hand wrap, so yeah, martial arts, lots of people have very strong opinions and there's a good chunk of overlap. People have strong opinions because if you do it wrong you get uh, bloodied up really bad or worse and if you do it right, things are good, cash money and so, you know, you gotta vet your instructors, vet your uh, teachers and everything all that good stuff so that you're getting good training and not paying for garbage training that actually makes you worse down the line. You always want to be better. So hand wraps, I want to do a quick video because, um, yeah, my knuckles have been uh, busted up for like the last year and a half and uh, it's with hand wraps, with gloves and all the other different sort of crazy fun training I've been doing in between. So hand wraps are super useful because they help keep all your tight bones, your little bones in your hand together, keep them nice and tight so you're not busting your hand open. Because if you get your hand busted open, it uh, really, really sucks. And sometimes when the weather gets bad, it makes your whole hand hurt and you can't sleep well. And at the same time, also keeping your hands together because much like going to the range and wearing your proper safety goggles and earmuffs, this is doing something similar because yes, you're not, probably not going to have hand wraps if you get into a confrontation. However, training with the hand wraps ensure that you keep your hands ready and relatively pristine for a confrontation were the need to arise to use them. So, hand wraps. The way I look to it is I keep them, uh, well, these are the Everlast ones. Everlast tends to fall apart. Not nearly as good as the uh, Venom gloves I have now. But these are just Ever Everlast hand wraps. They uh, perfectly match my shirt, red and gray. Very important. Don't forget that. One of the uh, key aspects is looking good. So, I keep these in an old boot band that I used to use almost 10 years ago. It's It's been a minute. <laughs> this is an old boot band. But yeah, so we're going to take these. I like to keep them rolled up this way, 180 Mexican style. You can get these smaller ones, but you generally want to protect what you're trying to do with the hand wraps, effectively, instead of keeping those bones together, is you want to protect your knuckles from the actual impact itself, but you also want to have enough support on your wrist, because occasionally if you do catch something dodging or the heavy bag swing and you catch at that wrong angle where you get that bend in, it's like having good hiking boots. That extra ankle support is going to go a long way. So I'm going to do, um, actually, I brought my timer today. I have my timer down here set for a minute, and I've got my cool Venom gloves to show you guys how it slides together. So, for starters, how I like to do it, and there's a thousand different ways to do this. There's no particularly right way, but there are better ways. Generally go over the thumb and wrap back over there once. Go over the uh, knuckles a good twice, and then uh, you want to pinch down here. I like to put a ribbon, sometimes two. But ribboning is one of the trickier, more dexterous things you gotta learn how to do. And uh, that's gonna give you extra support on the knuckles without putting too much uh, extra material under the palm. Once you got your ribbon going, you wanna wrap that down a little tight. Then come under the thumb here and go between the pinky, the ring finger and middle finger, and then the ring finger and index finger. And you wanna give that a good wrap. Then you wanna go over the thumb and reverse it for a wrap. Then you want to come back over the thumb again, go in the opposite direction, and give it another wrap or two. Maybe go over the thumb one more time, and you're basically making sure you have enough material to get that extra wrist support going. So, this is tricky. The first handful of times you do it, you're probably going to have your fingers turn purple if you do it way too tight. And if you do it way too loose, the whole thing's just going to kind of come undone. But with a little bit of practice, you get the hang for it. You know the exact kind of like amount of tension you want, and you want that tension basically throughout. Got your little bit of protection on the knuckles here, so you're not busting those up any more than you have to. And even with just hand wraps alone, you generally don't want to go crazy on the heavy bag. You're still going to want to use gloves, because those gloves are going to go a long way. And, uh, well, 16 ounces, what I would prefer, is definitely going to give you that extra build up on the shoulders and what's not here, as well as giving you, um, it's going to wear you out faster. But most importantly, the glove is designed to protect your hand, less so the heavy bag, and less so any sparring an opponent's face, <laughs> we'll say. So yeah, uh, that's basically all there is. There's a bunch of different ways you could skip the ribboning. Some people put extra support on their wrist because their wrist is a bit uh, 
more fragile, but they got really beefy knuckles. Some people go heavier on the knuckles. And since I've already got like one sunken in knuckle and from busting up my hand previously, long story back when I was enlisted, um, having that extra bit of a knuckle support makes it a bit more comfortable to take those impacts and everything going there. So we got the left hand done. That's uh, arguably the easier one. I'm right-handed, so again, that uh, flexibility and stuff there going is pretty good. So now we're going to do, take the other hand, and I'm going to do the less dextrix one. And uh, because I'm filming myself, I'm going to do this all in a single go. I'm probably going to botch it pretty bad, and it's going to cost me extra time. That just means on a more relaxed environment, I will do better, right? Yeah, exactly. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hit this start button. You know, let's set it to two minutes. We'll play it safe. We're going to set it to two minutes. I'm going to stop it when I'm done. And then we're going to see how far, subtract the numbers. Easy math. And see how long it takes to get one of these going off the bat. So, timer set up. We're going to hit start. And it's going. And the hardest part is usually the loop. Uh, yep, one, two. Give you a ribbon. Do, do, do. Come on. Come on. Botching it. I'm botching it. He's botching. I did this the other day at Yield uh, Fancy Dojo. And that's uh, why I thought about the idea of doing this video. Uh, go this way. Go back. One over. Come on, come on, no. We're on the last part. Don't blow it. Don't blow it. Stop the timer. Bam. So it takes 40 seconds. <laughs> 40 seconds with botching, so probably closer to like 30, 35 without me uh, losing control and mentally, you know. <laughs> so much fun. Oh, if you do, um, if you do have an interest in boxing, you start getting into it, you'll uh, learn pretty quickly, as I did, you got an, okay, yeah, one, two, but that three, oh my god, that three. Every time you're hitting the heavy bag, you feel like that whole shot go up into your shoulder, you're like, I'm doing it wrong. And you probably are, but that's what, uh, that's where practice comes in. Psh, 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 psh. Yeah, it's fun. It's good stuff. So, yeah, hand wraps help keep your hands together, and then you want to... So you get a little bit of support here, so that gives you something for your fingers to sort of, like, dig into. And then uh, you get your hand nice and locked up. And yeah, as you'll notice, my fingers are not turning purple, which means they're not too tight, and it's not magically like loosening itself and starting to come undone and getting soggy. Sweat's gonna have a bit of an effect on the elasticity and everything, but you're still gonna have pretty decent support going on. And yeah, so you take that, you get your hands wrapped up nice and pretty in 40 seconds or less. And you take your preferred gloves. I've been using these uh, Venom 16 ounce gloves. Like Everlast, they are made overseas, designed in Thailand, unfortunately not made in Thailand, made under a uh, different, less popular red flag <laughs> we got back there. And uh, I like the Venom Gloves, the 16 ounce, like I said, they're going to help a lot with that shoulder and building up your muscles and hitting the heavy bag. And uh, yeah, if you go like amateur or pro, then that's going to be really cool stuff, but boxing is just a lot of fun. And it's got a lot of pragmatism to it. And like I said, we're not going to go too much into the martial arts debate here because people are going to go, oh, well, I think Muay Thai is better than karate and definitely uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is going to beat any striking art. Yeah, everyone's got really strong opinions based on what they're doing. I think, personally, I'm just going to throw this out there, it really depends on the martial artist because whatever style you're doing, the individual person, their proficiencies, if they have stubby arms or stubby legs or... If they're absolutely jacked out of control, all going to be contributing factors as well as their sense. And uh, so why is this important in regards to uh, gear and stuff? Well, obviously the Marine Corps adopted it. Not just because uh, what was it MMA was growing popular when I first went in, which I'm pretty sure plays a key role in why McMap exists as a thing. McNinja, hoppa! Eye gouge! <laughs> but um, yeah, it does, uh, it does a lot of cool things. They do a little bit of boxing for uh, the cool boot camp stuff and whatnot. I did have a few NCOs who were really prominent fans of boxing. They taught me a few things. I actually probably learned the most about boxing from one of my Japanese buddies who did not look anything like a boxer. And then the dude had, freaking as soon as he made a fist, he had massive gorilla hands. And you were like, I would never want to be on the receiving end of those. <laughs> oh man, so. Yeah, he taught me a lot of cool things. Helped clean up my technique a lot, so. 
But it's good, it's also good, well, it's good exercise. You mix it in with other martial arts that do kicks and stuff, and that's going to work on your flexibility. So yeah, it does get you in pretty good shape. There's all those good benefits, but just generally speaking in martial arts. But the key thing that you're looking to get out of it, is particularly with sparring, is uh, people generally don't want to get punched and or kicked in the face or uh, slammed into the ground, depending on the style. And um, you want to be able to do those things to the other person so they can't do them to you also doing a good training thing, but yeah, basically what you're building up is, um, especially in people who grew up in, uh, well, less violent scenarios and stuff, you need to get them sort of attuned to the violence, not like making them violent, but getting them to be like, oh, hey, this guy's swinging on me. I don't want to be like, oh, no, please stop, ah, my face. You want to be able to swing back harder and faster and, uh, get them to stop assaulting you, basically, so... It plays a good role in building up that mind mentality, and you know, man versus man, one of the uh, bigger things. You can beat PC opponents all day, but you get that man on man strategy, and all that stuff going on, and it's it's good stuff ultimately. Also, it gets you adrenaline, and when you get that adrenaline going, you're having a really good time. You finish up your match, you touch gloves, you go, yeah, man, good stuff. And then you're heading home, and that adrenaline drops off, and you're like, ah, oh, I didn't know I took a hit there. And you're insanely sore, and you gotta take a really good nap, and it's a good time, so. <laughs> but yeah, I just wanted to go over hand wraps. Yeah, these are the wonky Everlast ones. I'll probably get some better ones in the future. But, um, yeah. Outside of all that, sometimes the only thing that makes the uh, busted up left hand stop hurting at night, when there's storms and crazy stuff going on, is to get that uh, compression going from the wraps, and then I, like, pass out with this one hand wrapped up, so I can sleep, and then I wake up, and I was like, okay, it feels a bit better. So yeah, that's um, all I had for you guys today. If you want uh, more information on hand wraps, we could do it. If you do want me to do a whole big old vlog on martial arts, then um, yeah, I could totally do that too. I'm flexible. Well, not like physically. My uh, flexibility for my back and everything's kind of jacked up. But I can uh, do some flexibility with the filming. Because gear and guns are fun a lot. But uh, if you're only doing that, you end up with uh, like skinny, rich gun tubers. You end up with obese, well, obese rich gun tubers, you kind of end up with one or the other. And you want to be you want to be somewhat in shape if you're going to be doing good. There's a lot of benefits that come from uh, being in good shape and getting in all that good training. At the same time, if you bust up your trigger finger, then uh, you're not doing a lot of punching or shooting. So, head wraps. <laughs> but yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Just wanted to do a quick video on that. It's pretty easy when you get the hang of it. If you're just, like, starting, then... Um, I can always do more videos, there's a bunch of different ways to do your hand wraps, but you gotta do them a lot until you get the right tightness and you get the exact setup that works for you. So, that's all I wanted to do today. Um, I should have a good video on, um, I want to do some uh, videos on the, whatchamacallit, Mohawk camera and the, what's it called, the Beaver Tail Assault Pack, because it is not terribly well known, and it is pretty cool. Dated, but pretty cool. We also have the Yoke Pack, past tense for yeet. Cool stuff. So yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Um, cheers, stay chivalrous, and uh, let me know if you guys have like any crazy questions. Due to the uh, restrictions of the area I'm living at, it's a lot easier to learn all sorts of cool face punching techniques than to, uh, well, shoot real guns, let alone even airsoft guns can be a pain to get out there and do any sort of like, uh, who is it, the pff, Japanese airsofter guy who shot with... Uh, Flew to the States and did some shooting and did really, really well. So, cool stuff. Anyway, that's all I got. Cheers, stay chill, I'll um, catch you guys in the next video. Bam! Peace out.